welcome to part two of the what am I tutorial video please make sure you've watched part one to be able to understand how we got to the stage and be able to continue from that point so now we have all of our questions and images stacked on top of each other it's now time to start getting to the meaty group part of this which is actually the patch editor so this is going to work uh, and this will get very messy very quickly so please do forgive me on that and like I said this will be available via the Patreon page to my Patreons and available via Gumroad at a heavily discounted price because like I said this is a little bit buggy and still needs some improvement before deployment or amendments. So again if you've got any suggestions or ideas remember to comment down below. So we're going to the way we're going to work this is we're going to use a screen tap to change between each of our questions. This is the part that ideally should be improved because ideally we should have it so when our results or left or right is given it then fires a signal to give us our next question. That isn't currently the case. Uh, we could actually probably do that via linking our, our counter which we're going to set up in a second to the left or right trigger on each of these questions. Uh, the reason I haven't done that was mainly for testing but also there is a potential error that could happen when you're moving your head left or right that if your head was left in the previous position when the next question comes up it could just take it as the uh, sort of value for the next question. So this is why we have this sort of step in between so to speak. So I'm going to add a screen tap like so and then from the screen tap I'm going to add a counter. Now we're going to need seven counts as the maximum so we're going to have our five questions and then a frame either side one for our one initial frame being our question and our last frame being our answer that's provided by the effect and I will be working between two machines while I'm doing this because I need to look at the actual setup of my other machine that I did earlier. I'm going to drag from my count to add an equals exactly. This will be the initial value that's going to us so this will just be to show us our question. So I'm going to go to my null object question that's here and select the visible arrow and link this question which will have everything that's parented to it to my equals exactly. So when our initial counter or effect starts it always starts at zero this will give us our question at the beginning and again we could swap out the screen tap for a screen recording if you wanted to. If you want to see how I did that look at the randomizer effect that was created earlier on this channel. And we're now going to just create several more equals exactly's. So I'm just going to uh, do this as quick as I can. And our final one, which would be six. So we have a maximum count of seven. Seven counts the six values. So one, two, three, four, five, six plus zero is our seventh. Hence why we have a maximum count of seven. So now I've done that, I go and go to question one and select the visibility of that and link that to equals exactly one. And I'm going to do this for each of them. This is why we created a null object. So all, everything that's parented to it will only appear when that value is presented to us. And this is why naming conventions are super important. I'd recommend if you get lost or confused to pause the video or play it in, in super slow-mo. Like I said this is a effect that still could do some improvements. Six. And then our answers should be the final thing that's shown. Now this answers we will have to revisit later when we actually get the uh, logic in but for now this is perfectly fine. So if I go and preview this and just go to simulate touch and tap screen it should change between each of the questions that I've created and then the answers at the end. Okay so now we have that basic part done we now need to start adding in the values for things like our head rotation. This is where things get very uh, very messy and ugly. 
so I'm going to need quite a bit of space for this. So I'm just going to select all of this that I've just created and move this out of the way so it's not going to get in our way. We will need to link into this to our new effect that we're creating so uh, do be warned on that. It's, I wish I could show you everything on screen at once but uh, the way this works won't let me. Okay so I'm going to go to my questions or my face tracker. I'm going to go to interactions, patch, create and I'm looking for head rotation. So this will take our face finder or our uh, initial face and then allow us to take the values of whether our, of how our head is rotation or leaned to give us our true or false. So we're going to be using the leaned left and leaned right for true or false. And our leaned left will represent our true and our leaned right will represent our false. So this is where I had originally hit my first roadblock when I was creating this effect. So when I was trying to get two inputs into one, so I was trying to get two outputs into one input and it was not having it. So we go the way we're going to get around this is we're going to have to create a batch patch or group patch. So um, again, I'm just going to move out of the way so we don't need this yet. We're going to come back to this in a second. And over here in some blank area, I'm just going to create our batch patch. So this is the kind of guts on how this works. And this is the bit that kind of takes in the logic of the position and allows us to input multiple things without having a sort of problem. So the way that this batch patch will work, you'll see when we get through it, but we need to first create two pulses. Like so. And then we need to create four switches. And we're going to link our pulse turned on to our turned on on our top switch and to our turned on on our third turned on switch. So first and third for the first pulse and the second pulse we're going to link our turned on to our second and third, the uh, fourth sorry, switch here. So we should have something that looks like this. We're now going to link the turned off from our first pulse to our third turned off. And our pulse from our second pulse, uh, turned off from our second pulse to our turned off on the fourth switch. So we should have something that looks like this. So on to on to on, off to off, like so. The top two should not have anything going into the turned off switches. And now I'm going to add an or. So this will take a value of whether we're doing a left or right or true or false. And regardless of which of those two inputs it is, it will fire off a signal to say this has now been enabled. I'm just going to link our two top switches into this. I'm then going to create an AND and I'm going to link my OR into the top of this AND like so. I now need to create two more ANDs so I'm just going to uh, create two more ANDs like so and I need to link the switch from my third, my third switch to the bottom input on my first AND and the last four or four switch to the bottom input on my second AND. So these two ANDs here should be connected like so. And then going to need to create a pulse and link this to my AND values. So I should have two pulses linked to my two ANDs. And then I need an option switch. So this is what's going to output our value to say whether it's true or a 1 or false which is a 2 and those values will be added up at the end to give us our final answer. So 
So I'm going to take the turned on from the pulse to our set to one, and the turned on from the pulse from our second one to our set to two. And here at the top end, I'm just going to create one more pulse for the top end. Don't worry, we will be making this into a, a group patch afterwards, and uh, we'll be at, this one will make more sense once we've got it all completed. Add one more option switch, and I'm going to link the turned on from my pulse to the set to four down here. And this here will just be a redundant uh, value for now. It's something I will want to utilize later, so don't have to worry too much about this but uh, this will give you more scope in the future. So with this all set up, I'm going to just select all of this, I'm going to right click and go to group. And I'm just gonna call this my uh, question checker. And we're going to right click on that, go to group properties. And this is where we need to now add some inputs and outputs. So right click on this and go into group properties. We're going to need to add three inputs. First input will be a Boolean. Likewise with the second. And our first input we're just going to call true. Second input we're going to call false. And the last input is going to be a question enabled. So is that question actually currently available? And this will also be a Boolean, like so. Now on outputs, we need to create three outputs. So our first output will be a number, and this will just be called value. Second one will be a number that is called answered. And our third one will be an output which uh, I'm just going to keep as output and make it a boolean, like so. Now I can go back into my group, so expand back into my uh, batch, and I should have these three pink patches and three yellow patches. And I now need to hook these up, like so. So I'm going to link the true to the first pulse. I'm going to link the false to the second pulse and I'm going to link my question enabled to multiple of values. So I'm going to get question enabled to the AND, so the second AND along here and the AND third AND here. And I'm also going to need to link this to the AND at the top over here. So we should have it looked, hooked up like so. I'm going to link the value to my second option switch, I'm going to link the answer to the top option switch, and then I'm going to link the output to a new patch setup we're going to have to create. So we actually missed something off when we were making this, that's my bad. So from this switch here we actually just need to create one more property, so I just need to click and drag down here, create an OR, and I need to link the two bottom switches to this OR like so. This will also be linked to a pulse, which will then be linked to a switch. And we want to make sure that the turned on from this pulse is linked to the turn on on the switch and the turn off is linked to the turn off on the switch as well. And then link this to my output. So, you should have something that looks like this as your sort of grouped patch. We can now come back out of this and we should have something that resembles what you see on screen now. Now some of these values we are kind of redundant so the output and the answered we don't actually really need. Again I'm leaving them in there for uh, future potential so you can actually utilize these to achieve all results which we may revisit like I said in a future video. Now we've created this group patch, I'm just going to um, end, this, end this video here and we'll come back to this in part three. See you soon.